So, Cape Town, South Africa. <sighs> there are some good things. I won't start with the, um, the negative. Hello beautiful people, welcome to my channel. It's me, Eb from Eb's Migrations. Several years ago, I decided to leave the US and embark on a journey of living abroad. That journey has led me to some beautiful places around the world. I share my journey to inspire you to take that leap of faith, follow your passion, and live your best life. There's no better time than the present. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. But um, first, if you are new to my channel, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. And if you are returning, welcome back. This particular episode is part of my travels in and around Africa series. So um, I started with South Africa, Johannesburg specifically in South Africa. And now this video will be about Cape Town. So after I spent time in Johannesburg, which was just a few days, just to all the negative things people were saying prior to me going, I then went to um, Cape Town. Now, Upon arrival, it wasn't that same like welcome home, love experience that I received in um, Johannesburg. Yeah. Tabletop Mountain would be like a highlight of um, Cape Town. Although I have my reservations about the country, it's still like South Africa, specifically Cape Town, about that province. Um, it's still beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, I won't take that away from it. It just felt like I was still in America, you know? And typically when I leave America, I'm trying to leave America and experience something different. But back then, I think I appreciated the convenience. But um, Tabletop Mountain, I took a cable car ride up. You can hike it. I didn't know that and I was by myself. So I just didn't plan for it. I just took like um, the cable ride up to the top and then you're able to just walk around and see the different views of um, being at the tip, the southernmost tip of the that hemisphere. So it's just nice to experience that. So um, yeah, walked around, saw the views and then um, nothing stood out about the food, typical like you will find in Johannesburg. Um, Outside of Cape Town, I was in. I spent time in Durban, and Durban has really good food. Like just because there's a larger Indian community, and they make something called bunny chow. Most people, like a lot of people, may not like it, but I do. It's like you take a loaf of bread that's not sliced, and you gut out the insides, and then you pour the insides, and you replace it with like a different spiced beans that they make. So um, it's pretty good. I like bunny chow. The club scene was cool. I did go out partying and. And that was nice. I met another solo traveler from Botswana and my next video will be about Botswana. And I met her who I stayed with um, in her home. We met in Cape Town at a vineyard. So Cape Town is known for like their wine vineyards and it's so affordable, especially in comparison to the price of um, wine in the States. So went to the wine vineyard and there is a hop on hop off bus now again i am reporting from like years ago <laughs> so i don't know if this hop on i look the hop on or hop on bus um hop on or hop off bus works but there is one that it'll take you to the different vineyards so you can like just vineyard hop with this bus and you pay like a daily fee and it'll stop the only thing is prepare for traffic coming back that was insane. We waited for like two hours. I think we got off at some point, like I, the people that I met <laughs> while at the vineyard, we got off and then we just took a taxi to, or walked somewhere nearby to eat to wait out like traffic and traffic was intense. But um, the hop on hop off bus will bring you to the vineyards. I only made it to one vineyard, like wind up meeting people and we chill. I met um, two people from Zimbabwe and then one sister from Botswana. And she was also traveling alone. So and her birthday was that following day. So then we met up, I treated her to breakfast and then we hung out that day. And the two people from Zimbabwe that we met told us that like we had to experience the um, train and the local taxi. So um, we were like, okay, we'll take the train to Penguin, like Boulders Beach. Boulders Beach is where you can see penguins on the beach. We took a train and then out of nowhere, the train just stopped because there was no more tracks left. Like the tracks have been interrupted. And then we were told that people still <laughs> and sell the bars from the tracks. So the train couldn't go any further. So we wound up taking a bus and then walking like an hour to get to Boulders Beach. And um, 
As soon as I got there, I think we spent like 10 minutes just because it's a really tiny beach and loaded with people because the penguins are there. After that, um, Ubered back. <laughs> Did not walk back or do any of that nonsense. We And um, separate from that, but the botanical garden. The botanical garden out there was beautiful and there's this nice sub suspension bridge. It's so green, it's nice, it's one of my favorites. Um, but I would highly encourage you to take the bus to go see the botanical garden. Just the beauty, like it's nice to be at a restaurant and have a view of a mountain, right? Like that's just not typical to just like sit and have a view of a mountain, like that was nice. And when I first arrived, I stayed in Constantia, which is like one of the more affluent suburban neighborhoods out there, just because I wanted to be close to the vineyards and that put me close to the vineyards. So, um, but when I went to this restaurant, as soon as I walked in, it was like crickets. You could hear how everyone was silent. <laughs> And then when I sat down and started to speak to the waiter, I guess they heard my accent and realized that like I wasn't a local African because <laughs> they lightened up. Like you can hear like forks hit the table, like hit the plates when I came in just because people who look like me, who would identify as African or a black African in this particular neighborhood that you just don't see them. like. I was a foreigner, so outside of that, these restaurants, and um, my Airbnb host is who recommended it to me. <laughs> and I don't think she thought thought that thought that through in particular, but I disliked. <laughs> oh man, the energy of Cape Town is just like, you know, apartheid ended in the 90s, so that energy for me, it was still there. Like by that time, that movie Get Out had been released, the one where like you go into a sunken place with the, the teacup. And that's what I felt like the entire time, like I was in the movie Get Out. Like I wanted to take a picture of the people because they would have people which would be considered like the what I, the movie The Help for people from the States. So these are the people who tend to the homes, they would wear a uniform. Like every Airbnb I stayed in, they wore these uniforms. And when I was in Johannesburg, that wasn't the case. Like, so in Cape Town, it was just weird to experience that. And they never made eye contact with me when I spoke, which was another strange thing. I'm like, that's weird. And always had their heads down. And then I learned later after meeting someone um, that, and then just after spending time, like after this, after my first time visiting South Africa, I wind up living. And you can watch my video about Johannesburg, about more of that. But they sell these uniforms in a grocery store, okay? Like these uniforms, and it's only for like the black Africans. And then when I took a local taxi to where they live, to the townships, um, just because like the, I, it was something I wanted to experience. So I took the local taxi to one of the townships and immediately, like soon as we crossed the border, it was such a jar. It was like someone takes, like slams the brakes and you just fly to the front of the window. Like that's just the impact of contrast and how alarming and like just <laughs> disruptive to my spirit it was like just to, it's not funny I'm laughing but it's not funny like it was um, very jarring just to see how people who looked like me how they lived how most of the locals were living in these townships that were like an hour plus away and then to see those who have money who were coming from like Europe different countries in Europe and how they live and how these people travel so far to come work from them and just the energy that I received. It was just very layered. Um, there's a hard divide between the have and the have nots in Cape Town more than, is more present than it is in Johannesburg. So um, I cried a lot when I was there just from like seeing how different people were to me and how they treated locals. Right, and it's just because of the way that I speak or they will find out that I'm American and like I guess that represents money and access. So I just was treated differently than a lot of people who looked like me and that bothered me. Um, especially to be like this was maybe four years ago. You know, this is still very recent. And just that contrast between the have and have nots and even how like black Africans treated other Africans there was, yeah, I remember being at a restaurant and um, a man had walked up to me, like I was out in the CBD area having like Turkish pizza. And some guy walks up and he asks for money. Now when I'm traveling alone, I normally don't reach into my bag for money. If I don't have money like on a pocket or anything, I don't reach into my bag to get money. So um, I remember just telling him like I didn't have. And then he walked away and he sung like this 
spiritual hymn that just resonated with me. I don't know why, but it did. And then I was like, you know, let me look to see. I, I know I have some coins. So I reached in and get coins. And then I like motion, I got his attention and he was running to come back and he had like a cane um, or like an arm brace to help him walk. So I told him like, take your time. I'm not going to change my mind. Like <laughs> take your time and get here. So I give him the money and then he said, um, you know, I had like little piece, like a pizza, like a few, like a few slices of pizza that I was picking around. It was a Turkish pizza. So like, it was just not my cup of tea. So I was just picking with it. He was like, whatever you don't finish, do you mind if I have? I'm like, of course I'm picking with this. Had I known I wouldn't have been picking with it. So anyway, a person that was working there comes and yells at him and was like, you know better. Like, and just like that, and like, I just felt his energy of like disgust and the way he was talking down on him just didn't feel right to me. Like, I didn't like it. Like, I didn't. And then to be in the middle of that crosshair, and then a guy becomes really apologetic. And I'm like, no, you're fine. It's okay. And then I asked the guy to wrap up the pizza. And I told him, like, the guy is fine. And he comes back with the pizza box, right? And he goes to hand it to me. And I said, no, I had him hand it to the guy that he just, like, <laughs> treated, like, something less than human and I, I didn't like that so you should have saw like his hand was like shaking when he had to hand it to him so I don't know that hit me I'm a softy I'm sensitive I'm a super duper empath so these type of things probably wouldn't impact a normal not normal but won't impact a lot of people so you can go and not experience this like you can go and stay in nice airbnbs that even have elevators you can live like a king and a queen if you're coming from europe or the states or the west you, you can live nicely the views are beautiful it's a beautiful country but energetically for me i will not be returning to cape town it is one place um, I keep calling it a country. South Africa is the country. I'm just breaking down different provinces that I visited and um, Cape Town is a huge one. So I figured I'll talk about it. But um, that, if you are an empath, just brace yourself, you know, if it's somewhere that you wanted to see. But um, there are other surrounding places that you could visit and still get a taste of South Africa without going to Cape Town and still see some beauty. Um, Durban is cool, Peter Maritzburg. I went to the Midlands and that place like that was the first time I just seen pine trees that were crazy tall and you just to get out the car and smell it like just to inhale like fresh pine was nice and then their shops had like um, milkmen that would drive by like on a milk truck with glasses full of milk um, what else did the Midlands had we went to this restaurant and um, it's like a cafe and just the views of like the green parishes and just to see how they stretched far and it was nice. I really enjoyed the Midlands and there was a nice little area that had a waterfall. <laughs> it's cool. Like South Africa really is a beautiful country. Um, beautiful country. One that you won't expect. Very diverse um, in terms of like the landscape and the different people and the different parts that you go to visit. Like you can, from Johannesburg to Durban to Cape Town, Peter Marisburg and the all very different. Peter Marisburg and the Midlands, I hardly saw black people, even Africans. Like you go miles and then you'll see them maybe walking on the street and that's coming from a house cause they were working at a home, taking care of a home. But that was weird to experience <laughs> on a continent of Africa to like be the only person who is of my complexion so um, aside from saying who looks like me when I say who looks like me I'm speaking of who's my complexion so um, that was strange but beautiful beautiful place um, the dogs also bark more in like Peter Madsburg in the Midlands at more brown darker complected people I was told this by several people who own them um, just because they say when <sighs> black Africans again South Africa is the one country in Africa where there's a distinction between a white African black African and a colored person and I explained that in my Johannesburg video if you have not watched that video but for like black Africans and Indians dogs will be very aggressive when you're walking by or even entering a home and they are trained to be this way and I found that to be interesting that people train dogs based off the skin complexion how to respond and how to behave but um 
What else? Me personally, I would say go to Johannesburg if you're looking to go to South Africa. And I would suggest you go watch my Johannesburg video if you have not seen it. Um, you can go to Prison Island, I believe, from Cape Town. Like that is an excursion where Mandela was held. So that is something that a lot of people go to do when they are in Cape Town. It's just prepare and reserve in advance because a lot of people are going to do it and you have to take a ferry over and I think there's only a certain amount of seats. So make sure you schedule that prior to if that's what you're gonna do. But all in all, you make your choice. If Cape Town is on your list, go have fun, explore it. It's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place to visit. If you're considering South Africa, forget what the naysayers say, go see it. And I highly encourage again, <laughs> go to Johannesburg. But um, anywhere you go on a continent of Africa is great. Just be on a continent. Next video will be about Botswana. I said that in my video about Johannesburg, but before I left from South Africa, I wanted to cover other parts of South Africa. So we are moving on from South Africa to Botswana. And thank you for your patience with me loading these videos about Africa. I've been so busy and everywhere. So I'm trying to make time to do these videos, but um, love and light until next time.